Hi, second graders. It's Mrs. Shuck. We're on grade two skills, unit two, lesson two. Let's get started. Our learning goals for today, to read and review contraction words, read and write some more magic E words, read the tricky words by, my, and have, and read a new story called The Milk and answer some questions about the story. Okay, so reviewing contractions, which we've talked about, or you've talked about before, but to review, a contraction is when you have two words and you put them together. One of the letters is taken out and you use an apostrophe to take place of that missing letter or letters. For example, I am. When you put it together, the A is gone and you have an apostrophe in its place to make I'm. Do not becomes don't or the O in the apostrophe or the apostrophe is in the place of the O. Okay, so we have a list on the left of contractions and on the right of the two separate words. So we're going to match them up. Number one is it's. The two words that make up it's are it is. So we're going to connect them there. All right. Now, when I say the contraction, if you can find or, or if you know the two words that make that contraction, go ahead and say it and then we'll do them all together. Number two, can't. What two words make up can't? And on this side we have cannot, I will, that is, it is, I have, and I am. So can't is made with cannot. Number three, I'll. I'll is made with I will. Number four, I'm, I'm comes from I am. Number five is that's, and that's is a contraction of that and is. And our last one, I've, which is a contraction of I have. Okay, the screen, the same thing. We have our choices, she is, what is, let us, he is, there is, and at the bottom, I would. Okay, so let's get started. Number one, theirs. What two words make up the contraction theirs? Good. There is. Number two, he's. What two words make up the contraction he's? On the left, or on the right, we see he is. Number three, what's. Remember the apostrophe takes place of a letter or letters. And the two words we're looking for, what is. Number four, let's. And what do you think? Number four, let's is let us. Okay, two left. Number five, I'd. So of our choices, it would be I would. Like I'd like some ice cream, I would. And number six, she's. For she's we have she is. Good job reviewing. Okay, now some of the letters, vowel sounds that we learned before, we have the ah sound. So we learned that hop, the O is one of the common spellings for ah. But we have a new um, vowel sound today. So the ah sound is the short vowel sound for the O. The long vowel sound for O is O, just like we had yesterday, A and I. Now we have O. So on the screen, you see the word stone. So to sound it out, we have the O and the E working together to make that O sound. So we have S. Then we have t, o, which is the O and E working together, and n. So just like yesterday, we have some more magic E words today. So a few other words that have the, um, the O and the E working together to make the O sound. And again, they're not together, but they work together. We have note, hope, froze, Road, broke, and bone. So 
here's our spelling for our long O sound with the magic E at the end. An example word is home. If you see, this is just one of many spellings for the long O sound. Okay, and our second vowel sound for today is the long U. So just like with our other vowel sounds, we have the U and a magic E at the end. They're working together to make the U sound. So our word is cute. We have the K. The U and the T sounds. Okay, a few more words that have the long U. Mule, cute, mute, fume, cube, fuse. Here's our spelling card. We have the U with a space for a consonant and an E. Our example is the word cute. And if you look at the power bar, it's not the most common spelling, but it is one of the spellings for the U sound. Okay. So just like yesterday, we're going to add a magic E to a bunch of words. So the words, um, the vowel sounds change and we get a new word. So say them along with me. What do we say on the screen? We have k a t, cut. We add the magic E. The U says its name and it becomes cute. Okay, starting off with what word? Ha. Add the magic E and we get, this becomes an O and instead of ah, we have O. So now the word is hope. We had cap, add the magic E and our word changes to cape. Good job, make sure you're saying the words with me. We start off with not, not. We add a magic E and we get Oh, note. Okay, our next word, we start with mop, mop. We're gonna add our magic E and our word becomes mope, long O sound. So just remember, even though the O and the E or the U and the E or whatever vowel and the magic E, even though they're not next to each other, they're still working together. Okay, our next word, fin. Like a Fish might have a fin. Add an E and the word becomes fine. Our next word, cub. Adding the magic E, we get cube. This word, g -o -ob, glob, short vowel sound O, we get glob. We add the E and our word becomes globe, globe. Then some review, we had tap, add the magic E and we get tape. Slid, slid, we add the E, we get slide. Okay, now for this, um, we are moving on to activity page 2.2. We're gonna look at some compound words. And this is when we have, a one word is made up of two smaller words. Okay, so if you get stuck trying to read this, one little tip is to cover part of the word at a time and just read a section and then a section and then put them together. So for example, if you cover up the ending, you look here, we have a magic E on this word, so this A is going to say A, we have b, ache, bake, then switch and cover up the other side. And we have shop, shop, bake, shop, and the word is bake shop. And just like we said, as a reminder, the A and the E are working together. So to indicate that for a sound, we have this little horseshoe, horseshoe shape to trace them over. B, A, Bake shop. Okay, so let's move on and practice with a few more words off of our sheet. We have tadpole, tadpole, a, the, um, for the a, and the o is a long vowel o, so p o, o, e, working together to make the o, o, tadpole. Next word, 
bathrobe, same thing, long vowel O, R, O, B. We have like a horseshoe circle for the O and the E, so know that they work together to make that long O sound. Trombone, same thing, B, O, N. And lastly, we have com compute, compute, the long U sound. So when you see words with the long vowel sound, to circle the spellings, we have p circle for the P, a horseshoe shape circle for the U and the E to keep them together, and the T. -t. Okay, our tricky words for today. My. The Y has an I vowel sound, my, by, like I walked by the school, by, have, now we just talked about for two days long vowel sounds, but in have, even though there's an E at the end, it does not, it does not have a long vowel sound, it's, the word is not have, it's still an A ah vowel sound, so the A and the E, now that we're used to long vowel sounds with a tricky E, that's a tricky part. And have, it does not have a tricky E. Okay, back to our reader. If you have your reader, go ahead and take it out. If not, you can follow along on the screen and you'll have access to the story um, on your own. Okay, so we're still in bedtime tales. We're going to read our next story. So looking at our table of contents, we're reading The Milk, which is on page 8. Our story vocabulary for today, first we have lass, which is a word for a girl. Excuse me, the young lass was riding her horse in the field. Lass just means girl. Slop, which is leftover food scraps fed to pigs. The farmer fed slop to the hungry pigs. Fumed showed anger or frustration. For example, the man fumed when he missed the bus to work. And then a phrase, one step at a time which means slow down, take your time. When I get nervous about doing something new, my mom reminds me to take one step at a time. So that just means you know, relax, just do one thing at a time. Don't get overwhelmed with everything you have to do. Okay, today we're going to be reading what is called a fable. A fable is a story that teaches a lesson. It's a short folk tale that involves personified animals and teaches a lesson or moral. Okay, so a fable is just a story that teaches a lesson. It might have animals in it, it might not, but it's a short story that will teach you a lesson. A lesson meaning something that you can learn and take away from the story. Okay, so this story will have some of our long vowel sounds, our long O, like in home, hope, those, and stone. And our long U sound like in use, cute, and fumed. And once again, when we're done, we'll fill out our chart with our story title, the genre, the setting, the characters, and the plot. Okay, we're running ourselves back um, with Mike and his dad. We're in Mike's bedroom. It's bedtime. And when we finish the first story, Mike's dad was going to read him or tell him a bedtime story. So today, the milk. Mike's dad was getting set to tell a bedtime tale. He said, the name of this bedtime tale is The Milk. Once upon a time, a lass named Jane set off from home to sell a bucket of milk. Now before we started, we said we were going to read a fable. This starts with once upon a time, and that phrase once upon a time tells us a few things. One, that the story was set in the past, but also that it's um, it's a fable or a s similar type of fiction tale. Um, so that just kind of gets us set off for the story. As she went, she was thinking of the cash she would get from selling the milk. So here's Jane with a bucket of milk on her head. She's carrying it. She's going to go sell the milk. I have big plans. I will sell this milk. She said, and I will use the cash to get a hen. I hope my hen will make lots of eggs. So she sells the milk, uses that money to buy the hen. Then I will sell those eggs and use the cash to get a cute piglet. I will take care of the piglet 
and let him munch on pig slop till he gets nice and plump. So here's her piglet that she wants to buy and make it so he's nice and plump. Then I will sell the pig and get a nice dress that I can dance in and you see these these three dots is called an ellipsis. That means she's talking what she kind of cut off something happened. But just as she was thinking of the dress, she tripped on a stone and the bucket fell with a crash. The milk splashed on the path. Jane made a face and fumed at the spilled milk. So she was so busy thinking about all of these plans she had to buy, to sell the milk, buy the hen, sell the hen's eggs, buy a pig, and then sell the pig to get a dress. And she tripped on a stone and dropped her milk. So the moral of this story is take one step at a time. One thing at a time. Don't go way ahead, but focus one thing at a time. Is that the end? asked Mike. That's it, said his dad. What a shame, said Mike. She had such big plans. Mike's dad nodded. You can make plans, but planning by itself will not make things happen. Mike sat thinking a bit. Then he said, Dad, that bedtime tale was not bad, but it was sad. Next time, would you tell a fun tale? Yes, yeah, said his dad. Next time. So dad further explained the story, saying that you can make plans, but if all you're doing is planning, nothing's going to happen. So she had all these plans, but she wasn't paying attention to what she was doing. She was getting ahead of herself, and she ended up losing all the milk. Okay, so our chart for today, our story title, if you remember, was called The Milk. The genre, do you remember what the genre was we talked about for today? It was a fable. Remember the story that tells a lesson? Our setting which is where the story takes place and when. It was a long time ago, outside on the walking path. You saw her walking from the farm to where she was going to sell the milk. The characters are the people or animals in the story, and there's only one character, which was Jane. Our plot is what tells what happens in the story. So Jane goes to the market to sell milk, and she makes plans how she will spend the money she earns. But the ending is that she spills the milk. And the moral. The moral is the lesson that we can learn from the story. Take one step at a time. Okay. Um, so that's the end of the story. There will be a Google form for Unit 2, Lesson 2. Um, questions about the story. Um, and things that we've learned today in our lesson. Um, once again, here are the spelling words for this week. Remember to practice them every day, and at the end of the week there will be a test. Yelled, yanked, slumped, limped, plopped, smiled, shrugged, pa liked, patted, and you. That's all. Great work today, guys.